Deuteronomy chapter 28. If somebody beside you does not have a Bible, you might want to share your copy with them this morning so that we can all see and read this scripture here together. Deuteronomy chapter number 28. I'm going to begin reading with verse number 15. Deuteronomy 28 and verse number 15. This is a very, very, very well-known scripture by most preachers and Bible teachers. And it's God's dealing with Israel in the wilderness in the Old Testament. God established his covenant with the nation of Israel in the wilderness where they wandered around there for 40 years. Now he blessed them people like crazy because they were God's earthly chosen people. Anybody who knows much about the Bible at all, you cannot miss the parallel between God dealing with Israel and America. It can't be missed. I'm not saying America is God's chosen people or nothing even close. But the parallel is, it's impossible to miss. He had blessed that nation like no other nation had ever been blessed. And he told them, as long as you'll do right, now I'm gonna help you and I'm gonna bless you more. If you do wrong, I'll bring curses on you and you'll be in trouble. So it's up to you, whichever way you want, you know, every way you want to do. Now, America this morning has been blessed materially like no other nation in history. No other nation in history has had the blessings on it other than the nation of Israel that America has had. You are sitting today in the most blessed country in the history of the world outside of Israel. Amen. And um, you may not realize that. Look, other countries don't build walls to keep us out. <laughs> Nobody wants to leave here. Even the people who hate this country sure like to live here, don't they? I think anybody that wants to, hates America and don't want to live here, we'll take up an offer and buy them a one-way ticket. They can live in Saudi Arabia if they want to. Uh, they wouldn't like it there very long, I'm telling you. Now, God's blessed our country. He's been good to us. But look here what he told Israel and draw this parallel with me. Look at 28 verse 15. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And then he goes into this long thing about cursed you'll be in the city, New York, San Francisco, Charlotte, anywhere. Cursed you'll be in the field, Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, Montana, Colorado. Cursed shalt thou be thy basket and thy store crops, fruits. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body, kids in trouble, the fruit of thy land, increase of thy kind, cows, flocks of thy sheep. Cursed you'll be when you come in. Cursed you'll be when you go out. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke in all that thou settest thine hand unto for to do until thou be destroyed and until thou perish quickly because of the wickedness of thy doings where thou hast, whereby thou hast forsaken me. I want to draw a parallel, parallel with that to our country this morning. And I'm going to preach today on this subject, seven curses on America. What are the seven curses that's come on our country today? Um, I love our country. I'm very thankful for the opportunity to live here. If you live in America... You are among the elite. You are the richest people in the world by world standards. If you eat twice today, you're rich by the world standards. One third of the world went to bed hungry last night. One third went to bed starving. And you are in the top 6% that went to bed full. 6% of the world's population. If you got more than one change of clothes, you are among the richest people in the world. We don't, we don't think like that because we're taught to feel sorry for ourselves and poor me and I ain't got nothing and you know, stuff like that. But the truth is, the Lord has blessed our country. 
Now, because we have turned our back as a nation on God, these seven curses are come upon us. Number one, pleasure without conviction. Pleasure without conviction. What does that mean? That means we are a pleasure-loving people and country and society. The Bible said that in the last days, people will be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Uh, we, we're, we're in a generation where it says, I just want to have fun. I want to live it up and have pleasure. It don't matter if it's right or wrong. I couldn't care less. It don't matter to me what the Bible says. Uh, uh, to you know what with what God said and the Bible, I just want to do what I want to do. All thought for the body and none for the soul. I heard a preacher make this statement this weekend. He said the number one use of the internet. You listen? The number one use of of the internet in the world, you guessed it, is for filth and spiritual sewage and slime, pornography. Uh, Kids as young as seven and eight years of age, when they get a hold of a computer, the first thing they'll type in is their curiosity about sexuality. We are living in a generation that is absolutely polluted and rotten and eat up with uh, perverted uh, sexual material and activity. Are you listening to me? Brother, we are seeing pleasure without any conviction. And a nation can't do that. You cannot, we cannot do that and expect God just to just keep right on blessing us and right on blessing us. If you're here this morning and you look at filthy stuff on your phone and you, you, you think you've got it, I'm telling you the judgment of God is coming down on that sin. Coming down on us you're as an individual and it'll come down on you. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to have to give you what's on my heart this morning. It, it's killing killing us, people. It's absolutely killing us. Uh, we are living in a time when abundance of pride, you know, idleness, and fullness of bread. You know, what, you know what destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah? Everybody knows God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah in Genesis 19, and fire and hailstone come down and burned the city up because of the, uh, the wickedness of the, the homosexuality and stuff like that, and other sins too. And the Bible said three things led to that sin. Pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness. Them three things. That means this, if you want it. If you got restaurants down every street and can't even make up your mind where you want to eat and eat at all of them that week and go and throw up. And if you and if you and if you have abundance of idleness and sit around on the couch and ain't got nothing to do, and you're full of pride and think you're hot stuff, it'll turn you into a pervert. Is that plain enough for you to understand? Okay, good, good. Uh, plain language is easy understood. I never could stand to hear a preacher get up and talk like a politician where you can't, you can't. You ever heard a politician talk? When you get through, you say, what, what did he say? You're going to know what I said when I get through this morning. You might not like it, but you're going to at least know what I said. Amen? It's pleasure without conviction. Uh, I, I Listen, people, I believe in rest. I believe in relaxation. I believe in uh, some bodily exercise. My goodness. I mean, and you need to. You need to exercise. If you can't do nothing but make your own weights like this and do that a hundred times, do it, do it. For heaven's sake, do it. Exercise your arm. Uh, squat with them like that. And then tomorrow, add a guitar. I mean, I mean, and do something. <laughs> don't, don't take pictures of that, please. Uh, if, do do something. If you can't do nothing but wiggle your toes, move by all means. But you know as well as I know, we have made a God out of sports, out of athletics, out of basketball, football. Uh, Lord have mercy, people. I mean, people get more upset about their team and they, their team couldn't care less if you lived or died. They don't know you. My team, Lord. Well, listen, brother. We ought to be more. We ought to be more concerned about whether our kids are serving God or not. Whether our grandkids love Jesus. Whether where our county is living right and serving God. Where the church house is filled. We are living on well, the curses of America. Is pleasure without conviction. Number two. Number two. Politics without principles. Please fasten your seatbelt. I lose, I use, sometimes lose a couple when you start talking about that. I'm not campaigning for nobody. I'm not trying to get nobody elected. 
our, our choices are terrible and more terrible. That's the way politics goes. But politics in this country has sunk to an all-time low. You think this last election was nasty? You wait till you see this next one coming up. I'm telling you, you know, I, I'm, I'm not, like I said, I'm not for, politicking for nobody or against nobody. I'm not. God knows my heart. And if you take it like that, you've been watching too much TV and not spend enough time in your book. I'm telling you this morning, people, I'm interested in people doing right. I'm interested in people serving God and doing it right. When our politicians are run by, by demons and devils, do you, do you know why uh, the left, as we call it, wants all the uh, illegal immigrants into America? Do you want me to tell you why? You say, well, we should have compassion and love people. You know, Judas said that one time when Judas didn't like what somebody was doing with the money, and he said, this money should have been taken and given to the poor. And you know what the Lord said about, the Bible said about him? They said, he didn't care nothing about the poor. He was a thief and had the bag. And when they talk about, oh, the poor people in other country, the poor people in other country, I'm all for helping poor people. But the reason they want so many people, they're like California. California has now got enough uh, immigrants in to vote their way on every issue. If you keep bringing enough people in and give them everything free, they'll vote for you, plain and simple. Can't you figure that out? I mean, it don't take a genius to figure that out. I'm all for helping people. I wouldn't say no to nobody. If I stand there and somebody's poor and they need help, and they say, yes, come on in, I'll help you. If you got drugs on you or you're coming to kill us, no, you can't. Do you, does it take a genius to figure that out? They're arguing and spending billions and billions of dollars. You know what that is? It's politics without principles. I never thought that I'd hear the president get on TV and cuss. Cuss. It's got to the point where you can't even let your kids listen to the president talk. That's politics without principles. Who's keeping check on the people that are keeping check on them people? That's, that's what it's got to now. The sexual scandals have gone out the roof. Do you realize there's so many senators and congressmen caught up in, in rape and sex rings and scandals and stuff like that that they hire attorneys to get them off the hook and have paid for it with millions of dollars of mine and your tax money? Lord have mercy, people. If a guy gets himself in a mess, he ought to at least have to pay his own way out. Can I hear an amen right there? Yes, sir. That's politics without principles. They make promises they can't and not even willing, have no intention of keeping to get votes. Uh, they'll go back 30 years in a man's past and find out where he done something wrong in junior high or high school and say it disqualifies him to serve in an office 30 years later uh, when he's 50 and 60 years old while defending a president that was in office and had cheated and had affairs and everything else and said that and voted him in again and said his personal life didn't matter. You know what I'm helping you? I'm helping I'm giving you an education this morning. You better listen. You ain't gonna hear this on TV. You ain't gonna hear this on TV. I'm giving you an education today. Listen, I, I'm telling you, brother, uh, they, they are, there are today politicians, if they could, would outlaw what I'm doing right now here this morning. Then I the Bible. You, you mark my word. If the Lord don't come in another 20 years, story started, they're going to try to outlaw that book right there. Because that book speaks against certain things that they consider okay, and it's going to be classified as hate literature before it's over with. Right? That's right. And I will be classified as a hater. Now, it's all right for them to hate our lifestyle, but we're not allowed to hate anything that they say or do. We're supposed to tolerate. You hear people talking about tolerance all the time? The most intolerant people in the world of anybody that disagrees with their uh, uh, tolerant views. Amen? Amen. Uh, when the left is going to use the liberties and freedom that our Constitution gives us to destroy the Constitution. Constitution and those liberties that we get from it. It's going to backfire. That is politics without uh, principles. Number three, education without morality. Education without morality. Years ago in this country, our country, like it or not, believe it or not, was built upon quotations out of that book right there. 
If you don't believe it, go to Washington, D.C. I've been all over Washington, D.C. I've been to Smithsonian Institute and down Constitution Avenue and around them, them weird Masonic symbol roads and everything in the world. I've been, and I looked at all them quotes. They carved them in letters that high, that deep in granite rock, and it'll be a quotation from that book right there, not the Koran. That book right there, and brother, that those those uh, those letters built our country. America has its problems. America has its faults. I'm not saying America is perfect by no stretch of the imagination. But I'll tell you one thing: at least our fathers did believe in the God of the Bible and the God of principle and morality. A child today can go from kindergarten all the way through high school and even through college and never one time be taught or hear the Ten Commandments unless it is in a negative or a joking or a mocking manner. That's sad. Now, I thank God we got some that are trying. Thank God we got some uh, fellowship of Christian athlete people that are going into witnessing and, and school teachers that are right with God and stuff. Hallelujah. I praise the Lord for that. But far and wide, our kids are growing up being educated without morality. And that is a terrible, terrible thing. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I just heard about these girls uh, who lured, they're 12 years old, lured, I think one of them was 13, and their, their friend into the woods and stabbed her, little 12 year old girl, because Slender Man gave them the order. They just had a special on it on TV. I don't know if y'all heard about the Slender Man murder. Slender Man is a, they say, an imaginary figure that lives way out in the woods, and he's real skinny and tall, and he don't have a face, and he's just real tall. And of course, we know who, we know who Slender Man is. Uh, 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 he's, and he's giving instructions to these kids. Now, they say, why do, why do we have to do that? When I went to school, peop, guys brought guns to school. You say, Brother Danny, I didn't know you. Was, listen, shut up. We had the McGuffey Reader. No, we didn't. Uh, but the McGuffey Readers, the McGuffey <laughs> used to be what people did. You say, people brought guns to school when you was growing up? Yeah, they brought a pickup truck, and Daddy said we could go squirrel hunting after school, and it was in the back of the window, and they didn't even lock the door. You know, there's people in this country uh, that, that, that was before my generation. My daddy's parents, they, some of them didn't even have a key to their house. And the world's getting better, right? Now, what caused? You say, guns are the problem. Listen, they brought them then, didn't shoot nobody. It never entered your mind. The worst thing we could do would put chewing gum down on a girl's seat and watch her get stuck. I mean, the world, you know, I mean, you know, some stupid little something like that. Nobody thought about, listen, you better shut up calling me a dinosaur because your day's coming. I'm going to be visiting some y'all in the rest home probably pretty soon. So don't make fun of me. But that's how much it's changed just in this generation that you and I live in. Education without morality. Listen, buddy, when college students, our colleges have become a breeding ground. For, for communism. And the professors are training our kids. You know, they, the, the, when you go to college now, your, your, whole, your whole education teaches you to come out tolerant of anything and everything, unless it's that. And no morality, no right and wrong, no absolutes, and everybody get along with everybody else. When there's a world a war going on in this country. You can't even open your mouth now without somebody saying you're being mean or you're a bigot or you're, a, you're judgmental. Listen, people, all ever since I've been saved, I've heard jokes about preachers. And they're funny. What if I said, you shouldn't do that. I'm going to start an organization of you not allowed to speak evil, evil because my feelings are hurt. You can't open your mouth now. You're against women. You're against children. You're against this, uh, uh, an ethnic group. You're gonna, and I don't think you ought to say bad things about anybody. I don't think you ought to say things that hurt, really. You know me better than that. But good Lord, you can't even tell a, you can't even tell a funny story. There's all kinds of funny stories about preachers. You know, preachers eat chicken. All the preachers, out, every preachers eat chicken and a preacher's belt. You know, it ain't nothing but a fence around a chicken graveyard. You know, I've heard all that stuff. I've heard all them jokes. I've heard one of the preacher's false teeth, you know, fell in the well and they couldn't get them out. And so they lowered a chicken down in there. 
grabbed him like that. I've heard, uh -huh. and that's funny. It really is. It's funny. I've heard preachers say, well, I woke up one day and didn't want to go to work craving chicken, so I knew I was supposed to be a preacher. Huh? Yeah, we all laugh. That's funny. It really is. But you, you can't say nothing. This, this politically correct stuff is, is shut out of mouth. You're afraid to even open your mouth anymore. Have y'all noticed that? You say, oh my goodness, did I say something I shouldn't? I didn't mean to. Good Lord, people. And I don't mean him being ugly, but uh, you can't say he's short. You know that little short fella? Oh, don't talk like that. He's vertically challenged. Stupid stuff like that right there. I'll give you the way you're supposed to say it and the way it really is. They're not illegal aliens. They're undocumented immigrants. Amen. They're not, he don't stink. He, he puts off a non-discretionary fragrance. <laughs> I mean, his armpits stink. <laughs> you know somebody that's financially inept? That means they waste money. I don't. You know what an urban dweller is? or a uh, residentially flexible, homeless. That's what you're supposed to say. He's not ugly, he's visually painful. She's a sex care provider. No, she's a whore. That's what the Bible says. And the reason that shocks some of you people because you don't read the Bible. Read the Bible. Amen. That's right. He ain't a crook. He's ethically disoriented. He's not poor. He's economically marginalized, y'all. He ain't lazy. Ain't no lazy people no more. They're motivationally deficient. He didn't commit murder. He's had an unauthorized termination of someone's life. Really, I ain't joking. He didn't steal nothing. He's just redistributing the assets. What Bernie's gonna do? I don't think he's gonna get the chance. Number four. Number four. The next curse on this country is business without character. Business without character. Everybody, I mean, how many ladies do you think drives a car into a, a repair shop when a mechanic comes out and opens it? Oh, Lord. You're going to have to have an alternator. You're going to have to have, they'll sell her a bunch of stuff she don't even need, charge her six and seven hundred dollars, and, and all she needed, you know, was a screw turn or idle adjusted or something like that. You know that goes on. How many times do you think somebody fills a car up with nitroglycerin or something where it'll run until they get home and sells it to somebody? I'm talking about business without character. Hey, when, when, when I was growing up, Daddy had a charge account there at the store there in, in Nebo. Linda Hout, my cousin's daddy, Uncle Jack, run that store. And all the local people there in Nebo, some of you remember this, had a charge account. When Mom had to get groceries, she didn't, we didn't have a car. Daddy had, if it had the one car at work, and her brother would come and take her to the grocery store. She'd get a bunch of groceries and put $35.50 on Daddy's bill. And when payday came, daddy would go take his money and pay that bill. And that's the way everybody in town put gas and everything. On, on, put it on daddy's bill. And all you had to do is say, put that on daddy's bill. And they trusted you and you trusted them to put down. You know, when you pull up to get gas, you uh, pull up gas. Now, it, you, you can't get gas unless you go in there and pay for it first. You know why? Because people are so crooked. Lord, my cousins in West Virginia, they, when they want to go shopping, they live in the middle of nowhere, and they get to go to Charleston once in a while to shop. And them girls, I mean, that's crazy. They, all my cousins, uh, Mushy and all them, Carrie's been talking to them this week, they, they'd take the tag off and put a sign on the back of the car that says, Lost Tag, and just pull in somewhere and fill it up, drive to Charleston, shoplift all day, and come back. I mean, just, uh, uh, that's right, uh, and, and I'm not, that's awful. Uh, but we're living in that time where there's, they're rigging game. They are now accusing referees of rigging, especially in football, where a call can go either way, where, where it could go either way, and the ref slants a little bit. I'm not, I don't know if that happens or not. Wouldn't doubt it. 
wouldn't doubt that one bit. There's so much corruption, and every, everybody that believes that's the one that lost, I can promise you that. Uh, uh, but uh, I'll tell you one thing, uh, it, kids keep getting worse and worse. I mean, uh, I mean, we got uh, these kids everywhere, everywhere I go. We go visiting every Saturday and lot, sometimes in between, and everywhere you go, we say, hey, honey, where's your mama? I don't know. Who's that? Grandma. Where's your daddy? I don't know. It's, it's just over and over and over and over and over. There's people getting checks, social security checks. Their mama's been dead 10 years. See, if mom's getting a check every month and she dies, all you got to do is just bury her and don't tell nobody. And you get her check from now on and use it for drugs. I shouldn't have said that, should I? One guy, his daddy had, no lie, it was on the news, his daddy had been in there dead and the room closed up for like two years. <whistles> Lord in mercy. I bet they needed some Lysol or Clorox or something. Uh, but I'm telling you, that is business without character. I do this and I don't get married but me and her live together, and she keeps having babies. The government will keep giving us more money, and Grandma keeps kids anyway, and we get the check that comes for the kids and buy drugs with it. Business without character. Number five. You know what a curse on our country is science without honesty. Science without honesty. Now, science is supposed to be observable, uh, test things that you can see. In a, they teach most schools and colleges and people teach evolution as if it were a fact. Evolution is not a fact. Evolution is not even a good theory. There is, if, if there's no God that made this world, there had to be a time back yonder somewhere when there wasn't nothing and then all of a sudden there was something. So everything came from nothing. I heard a guy the other day, and he was arguing with this preacher, and he asked this preacher, he said, well, uh, I'm sure our audience, this guy was like a PhD, a scientist, and he asked a dumb question like this. He said, I'm sure our audience would like to hear you explain where God came from. Boy, we got him now, stupid preacher, stupid Christian. Don't, let's see, it. tell me where God came from. Now, a person who thinks like that has a very, very misguided and low limit of what they think God is. Listen, if God came from something, he wouldn't be God. God didn't come from nowhere. He always has been. The Bible said he's from everlasting to everlasting. He had no beginning. He has no end. And everything that was made come from God. What are you talking about where God come from? If God came from something, then that something would be greater than him. It's like a man in a computer. Uh, uh, if a man makes a computer, uh, the computer's got knowledge, but the man put it in there. Computer don't know nothing except what we put in them. And that's God is an outside force. Uh, if you're, you're assuming that there's no time, space, and matter. Everything's time, space, and matter. If there's no God... Time, space, and matter had to all come into existence at the same time. What does that mean? That means if you had time, no space and matter, there wouldn't be no, or you had no time and had space and matter, there wouldn't be no when to put anything. If you had space without time and matter, you wouldn't have no, no time to put that thing in, or nothing to put in. If you had matter without space and time, wake up now, wake up now. Some of y'all come in here with your bags on your eyes. You ain't been up 30, 45 minutes. All right, listen, if you had matter and no time and space, there wouldn't be nowhere to put it. So it all had to happen at the same moment. Nothing evolved. Your papa did not swing by his tail from a tree and chasing coconut. That's not true. That's a lie of the devil. Some of my relatives in West Virginia probably swung from their neck, but none of them swung by their tail. They didn't have none. I'm telling you this morning, folks, that is science without honesty. Uh, evolution is a hoax. 
I, I heard the other day that Japan was sending up a spaceship and they were going to, they, they may have, you know that's what they always say, may have discovered the beginning of life in the universe. and may have discovered life in the universe. I'll make a prediction. I think they're going to they're gonna come back from one of these trips and they're going to prove that there's little trickles down through there where there was water on Mars and say, see there? That used to be us. And they come down here and put us here and we're an experiment and they're monitoring us and they're going to try to prove that the origin of life started out there somewhere. That's going to come. And the Bible said they're going to have strong delusion. And if they come out with something like that, you know what we'll do? Life at it. Life at it. Well, anybody that reads the Bible knows there's waters above the heavens. We all know there's water up there. The Lord might have let it drown out in a, in a big cataclysmic judgment one time before we got here. You don't know that. I don't prove anything. That is science without honesty. Number six, we'll get close to home. Churches without evangelism. Churches without evangelism. It is pitiful. Churches have turned into nothing more than civic organizations where all the certain class of people. You know, if you go to some church, everybody drives a certain kind of car, lives in a certain neighborhood, gated community, lives in a, everybody in a church. If you live in another side of town, everybody in that church that maybe has a lower standard of living and they, all, and they all get together and say, how are you? Good to see you. And the guy standing there, he's just doing it for getting paid make a living and don't want to lose his retirement and don't want to rock the boat so he don't say anything controversial and just keep the people coming and keep the money coming in and keep the machine going. You know what that is? That is an absolute disgrace to God Almighty. Uh, churches sell their buses and get rid of their bus ministry and then start a daycare. You know why? Because the bus ministry costs money and the daycare makes you money. Don't give me that junk, brother. Listen, uh, churches without evangelism. You know what the Lord told a church to do? That we are to go into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. We are to evangelize. We are to take the gospel to every nook and cranny and corner of this world. That's why we have them buses sitting out there. That's why 95% of churches never do one thing to evangelize their community. And I'm not, we ain't setting the woods on fire, but at least, thank God, we believe that we're supposed to take the gospel to everybody in this county and surrounding counties. 95% of Christians never lead one person to the Lord Jesus Christ. Not one. Not one. Most churches have never seen a missionary. Most churches have never seen somebody give an invitation like I'm fixing to here in a minute. Never. Most kids go to church their whole life and they say they've never seen nobody go to the altar and really get saved. Never seen nobody get saved. That's a sad shape for a church to be in. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why we run them buses. We run those buses because there are people. Yesterday, we was out there yesterday, me and Brian, Brian's sick today, and he was sick yesterday when I was with him. He kept saying, brother, I'm feeling worse and worse. And he texted me last night and said he's got the flu or something. Me and him was down in here, and it was raining. And I thought it was going to quit raining, and I didn't bring my raincoat, and I had a sweatshirt on and an old, old like a khaki jacket, and it was just getting spots all over. And we got out there in the rain, and I walked, we walked up this house, and it's muddy. You know, the ground's mighty wet right now. You can, it's global wetting. And, and uh, I walked in these people's yard and went out there and an old, there's trash laying all out here like this. And I walked up and I knocked on the door of this little trailer and water was just a fall. They had a little bitty, they always have like a little bitty porch about that big and you try to get up under it and you can't open the door and you have to do that and then the water hits you right in the head. And, and I knocked on the door and nobody didn't come and we knocked and I heard Little feet going boom, 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 boom. And about that time, that door flew open, and there was six, I think, little girls. That one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. And I mean you to thought that it was Christmas Day. Their eyes lit up. Hey! Brian carries this little satchel about that big, and he opened it up and had candy in it. And boy, they reached down and they had them, them this little old thing, them warheads. What's a, I don't even know what a warhead is. I think it's a weird name for candy. But warheads. And the kids said, warheads, warheads. And they started grabbing them warheads. And I thought, I thought, my Lord, man, you'd think we just give them people 
$1,000. They're in there, that little dark trailer. It's dark in there. I said, where's your mama? Said, She's in there. I never, seen a, I never seen a man there. Those little kids, they, their eyes got that big around. They looked up. They looked at us. Listen, people, they're everywhere out there. They, they're, last time DSS called us, you know, they called us the other day. They called Kelly, and she's back yonder in junior church. And Well, they, I answered the phone, thank God. They said, we got another baby. Can you? I said, I believe we got enough right now. There's five, four or five babies in Burke County that ain't got nowhere to go and can't even find nobody to take them. Five, just in this county. What do you think it's like in Mecklenburg? What do you think it's like, Lord in mercy, in Chicago and all that? There's churches without evangelism. I challenge everybody here today, get involved. Get involved. If you can't work on a bus, Lord, help give some money to buy some tires. We got a couple that need tires right now. If you can't go on bus route, pray and support it. Help. Listen, Miss, uh, Miss, uh, uh, I think Eva, did you go by yourself yesterday? Eva. I think she had to go by herself. Donna, y'all, she went by herself. Went by herself. That's a shame with this many people here. Somebody had to go by themselves. Churches without evangelism. And number seven, I'm done. Worship without sacrifice. People want it. The front seat at the ball game, the back seat at church, and the middle of the road and the rest of their life. You have to go early in most churches to get the back seat. Pay $3,000 to watch uh, Duke make a fool out of herself. I'm just kidding. I'm just, I ain't for neither one of them. I wouldn't care if Duke or Carolina, either one, never won a game. They steal the glory from God. I wouldn't care if they never. I know you don't like that. I wish you'd get that concerned over the bus ministry. I wish you'd care about a sinner getting saved by the grace of God as much as you care about your favorite team. You might do something for God. And I like, I like, y'all know me, I like basketball. Man, I'd play seven days a week if I could. I would, I love it. But I got enough sense to know that ain't gonna matter one of these days. It ain't gonna matter who won that game. All that's gonna matter is where are them souls. You go to a lot of churches, it's just me, 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 me. What do you have for me? What do you offer for me? People come and say, what do you have for me? What do you have for this? What do you have? You don't find many people who say, I wanna come and worship God and it involves sacrifice. Real worship involves sacrifice. Sacrifice. Christians in other countries meet in hidden places in China, in Iraq, in in Iran, in Saul, in Sudan. This morning there are Christians who meet in secret and are afraid any moment the authorities will break through and put them in jail. There's pastors in jail this morning in other countries for preaching exactly what I'm preaching here today. You know what we got here in America? We worship with no kind of sacrifice. Don't you dare make me feel guilty, preacher. Don't you dare ask me to give my money. I mean, I got it running out my ears. I've got more than I've ever had before, but you're crazy if you think I'm gonna give. God, listen, the government asks for it and you give it to them. God only asks 10% and people won't even do that and he's the one that's blessed you with all of it. We have worship without sacrifice. Don't you dare. Some of y'all gonna say, Lord, it's you rally time. He's going to be fussing at us. Fast, fast. It ain't going to kill us to sacrifice a little bit, people, and miss a meal and miss so that somebody else might have what you and I got. Worship without sacrifice will kill you. Here's our attitude. I'll give a little bit if I feel like it. I'll come Sunday night if nothing else interests me more. I'll come Wednesday night if I feel like it. That's our attitude. That's our attitude. If we don't get back to this book, we're going to lose what we have. It's amazing to me. But Jason, y'all come on and get us a song. It's amazing to me that Jehovah Witnesses can ride bicycles all over creation. Our Mormons can ride bicycles all over creation. And Jehovah Witnesses can spend all day on, on Saturday knocking on doors. And a Christian, they don't even believe in hell. And a Christian who's eternally secure and right with God can't.
give out a trap. There's something wrong with our worship when there's no sacrifice. I don't know how you stand this morning, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, people, we're going to lose what we've got in this country if churches like us don't get back to God. We're going to lose it. Preachers have been preaching. I've been preaching. I know what I said here this morning is not popular, but it's true. Everything I've said here this morning is true. We're going to lose what the blessings of God if we don't get back to God. You say, what can I do? I'm just an individual. I don't know, but I always remember what Ed McAbee said. He said, America is like a building burning down and all of us got a bucket of water. I can't put that big old fire out by myself, but I ain't want to stand here. I ain't want to stand here when the Lord comes and my bucket full. I'm going to throw it on there and say, well, I tried, Lord. I've done my part. Will you do that this morning? Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Maybe you're here this morning, you're not even a Christian. Maybe you've never made things right with God. Maybe you've never made that step that you need to make, that you need to make and get your heart right. Why don't you do that right now? Would you do that? Maybe in just a minute, we're going to pray and we're going to sing. they're going to sing. Will you let God speak to your heart? Will you? Will you let God speak to you? Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. The privilege of gathering here this morning. I pray, God, that you would help us take these truths and apply them in our life. And Lord, help us to stand for what's right and the whole world goes wrong. Bless Shining Light Baptist Church. Protect us. Keep your hand on this place. Run them buses. Help us to reach many, many souls and boys and girls for Jesus' sake. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, God. Meet me here and let's pray this morning. Come on. Come on. Meet me here and let's pray this morning. You need to come this morning. How long has it been since you really got down on your knees? And you thank God in heaven for what He's done for you. Will you come? Amen. Amen. That's right. Come on. Come on this morning. Let's obey God. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Come on. If you need to come. Come on, young man. He said, Do you remember where I brought you from? Will you come this morning? Take a look behind you. Amen. And just how far you've come. Amen. Hallelujah. Every time you ask me, didn't I deliver? Right, will you come? Why would you be thinking? Will you come this morning? And I wouldn't see Let's just get in here and say, God, have mercy on our country. Didn't I walk on the water? Didn't I calm the raging sea? I spoke to the wind. You come today? You come this morning? Come on. Amen. I hear you when you call. Amen. I walk right beside you. Amen. To show you wouldn't fall. Didn't I leave all of heaven? How about it this morning? To die for your sin. I searched until I found you. All right. In a house that Everything all right, sir? Everything all right, ma'am? Young person? Amen. She hears the voice so still and low. She can't move like that before. She can't. Come on. I'll do this little thing for you. Amen. Wow, these are praying today. Good time to pray. Good time to pray. Good time to pray. Good time to pray. 
a time to pray. I spoke to the wind, it hushed and I gave you peace. Didn't I run to your rescue? Didn't I hear you when you called? I walked right beside you. I searched until I found you, and I do it all again. You know what this is right here? That's your compass. You know what compass does? Point you. Point you. True north, brother. That's where the Lord lives. That way. You know how heaven can be up for everybody in the world? It's that way. Up north. Sides of the north. That book is our compass. I'm glad we've got it. Lester Roloff said, America is an insane asylum run by the inmates. That's a goodness. This country's gone crazy, y'all. Gone crazy. Right has become wrong. Wrong has become right. Amen. It's bad. Amen, so uh, let's, all, let's all go chew on that for a little while and then come back tonight and I'm going to talk about how that, uh, how that you can know you're doing God's plan or will for your life. That will be very important. Very important, especially young people. If you feel like your life is a flop and you're, you're, you're stuck in a mess, you don't want to miss tonight's service, okay? All right. We're going to go. Amen. All hearts.